Last week on SciShow, we published a 50-minute mini-documentary about a truly bizarre and audacious moon rock heist. I, I, I don't want to spoil this for you, but it's it's wild. What became clear while making it is that Apollo moon rocks will always be extremely valuable, and getting your hands on one that is authentic and has a paper trail would be not like a little thing, like potentially a billion dollar thing. As always, the comments are full of questions, and as always, I am compelled to answer questions, but there was one! And this came up a few different times. If moon rocks are so valuable, then why can't we finance another trip to the moon with moon rocks? And my gut reaction to this was moon rocks can't be that valuable. It is so expensive to go to the moon. But then I looked into the only two times that samples from the moon have sold legally at private auction. And actually, it turns out that those samples are probably the second most valuable naturally occurring mineral that exists on Earth. Both of these bits of the moon, they were only able to be sold in private auction for weird reasons, because most moon rocks cannot legally be sold, but these two could. And I, I'm gonna tell you the story of how this happened in this video, so wait for that. But both of them sold for about $4 billion a kilogram. Now, both of them were much smaller than a kilogram, but four billion dollars a kilogram, you could definitely do a moon sample return mission for that price. But there are reasons why, despite the fact that this is the, as far as I can tell, the second most valuable by weight naturally occurring substance on Earth. There are a bunch of reasons why these particular samples are special and future rocks would not sell for the same price. And this isn't only because if you brought a bunch of rocks back, there would be more and so they would be less scarce. Though that is part of it. But to talk about that, let's talk about the two pieces of the moon that were brought back in the Apollo era of our history that are legally owned privately. There's only two of them. I think. There's definitely only two that have been sold privately. The first of these samples was a Soviet sample return mission. So Russia sent a probe to the moon, it collected some samples, and it shot it back to Earth. We were doing sample return all the way back in the 70s. And they were originally owned by this guy, Sergei Korolev. Uh, who was an engineer, he was a rocket designer, he did a bunch of the space race stuff. He helped launch dogs into space, he helped launch humans into space. And in thanks for his work on all of this, the Russian government gave him a little bit of moon rock uh, as a present. <laughs> and it was his, he owned it personally, so he could do whatever he wanted with it. After he died, his widow sold that rock to an American for some money. And then in the year 2018, that anonymous American put it up for auction, and it ended up selling for $855,000. This is actually the only what you would call an actual rock. These are very small rocks, but they are at least rocks. The other thing that sold wasn't even rocks. But at $855,000, these two little grains of rock, these two little rock bits, that makes them worth about $4.2 billion per kilogram. And that's fairly straightforward. You know, a gift gets sold, and then resold, and then resold, and that's... That's how that works. That's a, that's a normal way for it to be like legal to own a piece of Apollo era moon rock. The other one is weirder. So Neil Armstrong collected samples in a baggie. The samples were then removed from it, but the baggie still had like some lunar dust inside of it. It somehow ended up in a museum basement. At some point, the contents of that museum basement were being auctioned off. Somebody bought this thing for like $900 or it was less than $1,000. They bought this baggie and upon receipt of this $1,000 bag, they realized that there was moon dust in it. There was moon dust in the bag, so the collector held on to it for a while and then put it up for auction as an Apollo era bag with Apollo era moon dust in it. And again, there's no other way to get Apollo era moon stuff. So this is a big deal. In, in this most screaming deal of all time, sold for $1.8 million. And interestingly, if you estimate the weight of this moon dust, it comes out to, again, around $4 billion. This time more like $4.5 billion. Now in this case, the US government actually was like, uh, it turns out, no, that you can't, we can't have sold that to you. No one can have bought that. That is not something that we should have sold. They wanted it back. There was a whole legal battle over it, but eventually the courts of the United States of America decided that the people who owned this bag, in fact, owned the bag, and it was no longer in public hands. It was in private hands. So now there are these two things. These are the only cases of legally sold Apollo era, like moon returned from the moon to earth. However, and this, is where the entire idea of funding 
a mission to the moon with moon rocks gets broken. But before I tell you about that, I also need to tell you that the moon rock preservation squad shirts that we were selling in that video, this is your last chance to get them. We're doing them as a pre-order, so we get all the orders in, and then we order them so that we don't order too much or too little. We don't have to throw anything away, and we get the maximum amount of money going to the SciShow team so that they can make more good SciShows. But you can only do it for the next few days, and then we will not be selling them again. So get them now! There is a link in the description. I have enjoyed sporting mine, because if we do not place value on Apollo-era moon rocks, we will lose them! We will, and we see that in the story that we tell on SciShow. So we have to care about them. And the fact that we care about them is why those rocks specifically are so valuable. It is not the fact that they are from the moon. It is the fact that they are from the Apollo era of the moon. The first time humans ever left the planet and walked on the surface of another world. And I know this because I can buy moon rocks. And I could do it. Moon rocks for sale, and I could do it. No, oh, this is weed. Apparently that's a word for weed. That's, I don't, I didn't mean, I did not mean near me. I mean, at, I mean meteorites. <laughs> Let's move on to what I'm actually looking for, which is lunar meteorites for sale. And I can get them, and I can get them for not that much. You could go and you can buy a lunar meteorite for $170. This is 1.7 grams of the moon. You scale that up to a kilogram, it's not enough. They made the calculations here easy for me. 1.7 grams is $170, so that's $100 per gram. That means it's $100,000 per kilogram, which... I don't know if you know how numbers work, but that's a lot less than $4 billion. I know it seems like a lot. I'm not out here buying $100,000 of moon rock. That's not gonna happen. I don't doubt that there would be a lot of rich people who would pay a premium for rocks collected directly from the moon and given to them, rather than having passed through the atmosphere as an, a meteorite. But there is a thriving, business in moon meteorites. You could get moon meteorites. They are available. They're expensive. They're more expensive than typical meteorites, but they're not particularly expensive. If you really want to drop some cash, you can. This is a 371 gram moon meteorite, and that is $27,000. Oh, it, you, actually, you can't have it. It's out of stock. Apparently, somebody bought it. And I got to say, that's a lot of money. But when we look at the cost, sample return moon missions, Chang'e 5 was a moon sample return mission. It happened recently. Trying to figure out how much the Chang'e 5 mission cost, you guys. I'm having a hard time of it. They might not be as uh, forthright with the budget as we are. According to the deputy director of the project, the total cost of the mission was not much. Not much. Not much. The cost is close to building one kilometer of subway, he said in a press conference back in January of 2019. Man, must be nice to be able to just like not tell people things. <laughs> that could be about 174 million US dollars. So we're gonna we're gonna guess the upper end and we'll say 180 million dollars. That seems low, but not like preposterously low um, to me. Like it, that's like gut check. That's an amount that makes some sense, but <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, how much how much sample did it return? It collected 1.731 grams of lunar samples, including a core one meter deep, and returned them to so 1.73. Let's just figure out how much this costs per kilogram, you guys. Oh no! I thought it said 1.731 grams because in Europe, commas are the same as decimal points, but this is American Wikipedia. I don't know what I was thinking. It collected 1,715 grams, and now I've had to re-record this whole section of the video after making it live and then taking it down immediately. But that's what you get when you're doing it live. And this is like a, a thousand X difference. So it's a big enough difference that I definitely needed to uh, re-upload the video, but also it's a big enough difference that it kind of changes whether or not you could maybe pay for some of a moon mission by collecting rocks. So what we found when we were buying meteorites that had been blasted off the moon and then landed on Earth and then collected by people and then sold on a website was, at the upper end, $100 a gram. And let's do the math real quick, though I'm not screen recording right now, so you won't be able to see me do it. 180 million 
divided by 1,731 grams, and that's going to give us a uh, hundred, let's just say a hundred thousand dollars a gram. So this is still a thousand times more money than you would pay for a meteorite that was blasted off the moon and then landed on the earth. So is it possible to have a profitable mission that would go to the moon, collect moon rocks, and send them home? Maybe for two reasons, and I don't think so. Not right now, but maybe not that far in the future for two reasons. One, people are going to pay more for a moon rock that was collected from the moon and sent back to them, especially for the first mission. People just want to hear the story. That's what we're learning today. People are into the story, not really into the object as much. And just like George R.R. R. Martin, like, helped with colossal biosciences in part because he wanted to hold a gray wolf in the press photos. I think that in the same way you could ha see like a bunch of billionaires and celebrities paying a lot more for a rock that like somebody went to the moon to collect for them. So let's just say that you'd like pay 10 times more for a rock that's on the moon than you would for a rock that has just fallen to earth after being blasted off the moon at some point in the past. But that's, I'm doing it in my head, that's not gonna be enough. So let's just say it's truly crazy. You could get people to pay a hundred times more than for a lunar meteorite to get a, a rock direct from the moon. Now you're talking about $10,000 a gram. And then let's also say that if you're just like going to the moon and grabbing a bunch of rocks and loading them up and sending them home, that you're spending a lot less money to like make the science valuable. Like you're not doing a core and taking the core out and that's gonna be expensive. You're not like doing all the containment procedures to make sure they don't get contaminated. You're just grabbing rocks. And let's say that that halves the cost of the mission. Now you've got a moon rock that's worth $10,000 a gram and a mission that costs $50,000 a gram. Now still, you're not gonna be able to pay for the mission that way. But if you have a couple of other mission priorities and can get funding for those somehow, slash the cost of getting to the moon continues to come down, which it has a lot in the last 20 years. Yeah, I could see it maybe. I could maybe see it. And that's not how I expected this video to go. The world continues to change. And now we will go back to the video where I will talk about uh, why these moon rocks, if you went and collected them from the surface of the moon, would be worth a lot less than these Apollo samples or Apollo era samples that we have been talking about in this video. What this emphasizes is that the value that we place on things is what determines how much they are worth in dollars. And the value is much more than the fact that this rock is from the moon. The value is that this rock is from the first time humans went to another world. A moment in history that changed how we, I think, imagine ourselves. You know, for so long, the moon has been up there hanging in the sky as a character in mythology. And the fact that we could go to there, that we could be on it is truly amazing. And I do think that if you said to a bunch of billionaires like, hey, help fund this mission to the moon, we'll give you a moon rock, then that would actually potentially be a way to help. Now, you then also have to deal with international moon law and it currently I don't think is legal to sell a rock from the moon. I think it eventually will be because I think eventually it will be fairly normal to go to the moon. I'm sure that at some point in the future, if we continue our sort of march forward in our ability to control and harness energy, that we will get there and we will be able to buy moon rocks. But right now, I, d I think that you also would run into the, the legal hurdle of it being illegal to pre-sell moon rocks. The fact that the US government currently makes it illegal to sell any of the moon rocks collected during the the Apollo missions, and also that international law makes it illegal to bring any new moon rocks back directly from the moon, it means that these two ways, this Russian gift and this weird bag that was accidentally sold to a private collector, are the only ways for a private collector to have this stuff. So the value of that connection to our history and the scarcity of the regulations and laws surrounding it means very high prices. Though remarkably, red diamonds somehow are still more valuable. I'm talking for those like $25 billion a kilogram, which I'm not gonna pretend to understand. But if you ever see any government auctions selling cloth bags that were used in the Apollo missions, you should buy that because it might cost you $1,000 and then later you can sell it for over a million. That was a good day for that person. Well done, good job. 
Uh, probably feels pretty good to have that win in your back pocket. Just ghost coast it on that one forever. I will buy you a beer, even though you do not need me to buy you a beer. But I will not be able to buy you a Moonrock Protection Squad shirt. You can do that for yourself. This is the last time you can do it. We're just doing this pre-order. We're going to order all of them and, and then get them in. If you want to buy it, support SciShow and also get a cool shirt, you can do that. Thanks for watching my video. And if you want to hear an absolutely bonkers story of how some people did some illicit Moonrock acquisition and sales, the SciShow mini documentary is linked in the description. And now, why not just play Connections, Rodeo Hourglass, Kubrick Sunset, Free Scrap, Wall Street, Vine, Vine is also a street, Michael Jordan, Hollywood Boulevard, Herb Taurus, and Shrub Neuroplastic, Neuroplastic, Dissolve. I saw nothing, none of that. Hourglass, Shrub, Shrub, Herb, Vine, those are all like plant types, is that it? Shrub, Herb, Vine, Tree, is that just plant types? Scrap. Neuroplastic is a real, real mess in there. Also, so is Michael Jordan. What's happening? People who jump? Things that jump. What would Michael Jordan possibly be? Okay, well that's, I'm, I'm feeling confident about herb, vine, shrub, tree at least. I don't know how I feel about famous roads though. Vine? Wall Street, Hollywood, and Rodeo. Hollywood and Vine and Rodeo, I think, are all Sunset. Those are all Los Angeles streets, but that ruins my plant category. Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood Boulevard, Rodeo Boulevard. Is there another boulevard? Vine, I don't think Vine is a boulevard, but I don't know if it is because I don't know LA that well. Scrap Boulevard, our, well, Wall Street, no, Dissolve, Shrub, Michael Jordan Boulevard. Could be. Probably there's a Michael Jordan Boulevard somewhere. Taurus, Herb, Vine. Vine isn't a boulevard because it crosses all. Hollywood. Because Hollywood and Vine is a famous spot. They can't just be, they can't just be Los Angeles streets if the th first three are boulevards. But also I don't want it to be Vine because I want to have my plants back. <laughs> oh no. Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick is a director. Kubrick is involved in things. Kubrick contains the word brick. Neuroplastic contains the word plastic. That's a substance. Glass is a substance. Oh my god. It's just words that contain substances? What's the last one? Hollywood! No! No, that's not even one of the plants! Hollywood, Hourglass, Neuroplastic, Kubrick. That feels like it could be the purple. I might just go for it. That's gotta be, that's gotta be one of them though. So I feel that, and now, now I do get plants back. So I get, so since it's not the, it's, now I feel like it's not the roads. And that gives me shrub tree, vine, herb, plants, and then we got rodeo, not rodeo, stuff that has big bulls in it, scrap, wall street, dissolve. I haven't thought about dissolve much. If it was just wall, I'd like that. Mm -hmm. Scrap. Scrappy. Scrap is to fight. Scrap is to throw away. Scrap. End. Dissolve. Okay. So scrap and dissolve. Michael, J you got a Michael Jordan that contract. You know, that's what's, what it's, it's, it's a saying in contract law. When you don't want to do it anymore, you Michael Jordan it. What is it? Michael Jordan, Wall Street, Vine, Sunset Taurus Herb. None of those mean that. What? I had it. I was a hundred percent. I was. I was done. I had three categories done, and so the fourth was gonna just be. Uh, I would be able to figure it out. But now, what's the last one that you guys are staring? Some people are yelling at me right now. You are mad at me. You're like thinking, Hank. This is. This is unacceptable. You don't know the, the other meaning of Michael Jordan? Not my last rodeo, not my first rodeo. This is my last rodeo. I'm not getting in this rodeo again. I don't know why any, for the writers, I don't know why it would be anyone's first rodeo. I've been to a rodeo. It's not a good idea for the, for me, it was a fine idea. For them, it seems bad. Vine, Hourglass, Hollywood, Tree, Michael Jordan. What is, Sunset, Sunset, Sunset. Oh God, okay, all right. You were yelling at me and I appreciate it. You got through. The screaming, I finally heard it in my brain. And that means that what we have left is Taurus, Wall Street, m things that are bulls or have bulls, things to do with bulls and rodeos. Now the question is, is that the purple or is, I think that that's probably the blue and this is the purple. Things having to do with bulls though is very hard. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm neuroplast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that that's the purple though. Yes! <laughs> okay. And this has gotta be the, that's gotta be the blue. That's a good one. I like that. I like that. Michael Jordan and Wall Street being in the same category is a very weird. And then I guess, 
Yeah, yeah, scrap and, well, I don't know. Yeah, scrap and dissolve sunset. That might be the yellow, but I don't know. That seems like the green to me. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a weird meaning of the word sunset. I bet a lot of people might not have heard that one. Oh, gosh, that was tricky, everybody. Okay, one last time you can get this shirt. There's a link in the description.